Hello everyone, and today we're talking to Gaza, who is our new uh, team member at Tiptoe Hippo. We'll have an interview with him in more depth later, but I thought we'd kick him off right from the start with a question from one of our subscribers. And the question is from ERP. And he asks, how important is transforming data like as in price or even indicators in your opinion. It's the talk of the town for a while and he wants to know if it's a deal breaker for us. So Gaz, what do you think about price transformation and indicators? Well, um, if ERP is using time-based bars, he's already using a transformation because the only way of uh, the truest form of pure price is just uh, consistent uh, streams of closed prices in ticks. Um, and basically, with that consistent stream of ticks, you can decide how you want to break them up or how you want to measure them. Generally, we measure them uh, in time. Uh, how many ticks has there been in this bar and how much has it moved price? There's other ways to do it where you could measure the distance. You could measure the volume, the number of ticks, uh, which would be range bars. Or if you're using any indicators, that would be using a transformation as it is, because an indicator by definition is transforming uh, the price into something that it isn't already. For example, a, mu a moving average is a rolling mean of the data. Um, so, yeah. 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 So exactly. So even something as simple as the mean of price, you if you're using that as part of your system, then that is a transformed price because it's changed because transform just means change. And so anything that you're using that is has an input as price and then an output as something else is a transformation of the price. So it could be a moving average it could be a bollinger band it could be a a um oscillator um and like you mentioned first off the bat it can even be candlesticks just the graphical representation of the candlestick is transforming the price um so that's probably a great technical answer but i think what erp is getting to here and i've seen lots of talk about it as well is um, the actual transformation of the data itself. So taking logs of data and and transforming them in all those kind of manners, then analyzing the data after it's been mathematically transformed. So what are the benefits? And do you think um, that there's any insights that can be gained from changing the data in that way before you actually get to the analysis of it. Yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely uh, a really useful thing to do. Uh, you want to make sure that however you're transforming the data, you want to make sure that your output from your transformation is representative of what price is actually doing. If you transform data and it produces a really, really nice uh, normal distribution, and then every time price goes to one of the tails, it just keeps going. That's a useless transformation. And that's not going to give you any benefit when you try and come to trade it, because you might assume that the distribution is saying it's going to spend most of the time in it towards its mean. And then price due to some sort of compression or some sort of dodgy math might mean that you end up going long when actually you're going to get stopped out every time doing that. Uh, logs of prices are a really good way of uh, equalizing the up and down moves because a log down is the same uh, distance wise as a log up. So, and they're also additive. So you can, uh, yeah, there's a lot of use for log there. Um, I personally think log is probably one of the best things you could do to price before doing any sort of indicator analysis. Uh, and then in terms of distance, you could you basically need to decide whether you're going to 
use time or distance as your main uh, as your main transformation. Remembering that most of the time, if you're in a trade for an hour and it doesn't move anywhere, you haven't made any money. If you're in a trade for a minute and it moves a mile, that's how you make money. So distance is probably the more important of the two axes that we need to um, pay attention to. And the other um, thing that, um, oh, sorry, you, you got more no, no, to say. No, I was going to I, I was gonna say that another uh, topic that comes up regularly when they're, when talking about price transformation is um, station al station al station uh, stationarity. <laughs> do you want to say the word for me? You know what it is. So uh, do you want to touch on that word that I can't pronounce? Uh, so uh, stationarity is uh, ideally, well, no, it is where you have data that will oscillate around a constant mean, uh, ideally zero, uh, and the variance above and below that zero line is equal all the way along. That's called Homer's Gedacity. Uh, yeah. And I'll be taking my I'm glad you said it and not word. me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a definite $50 word there. But uh, homoscedacity is where you have uh, the data being constant variance all the way along your zero line. And that would give you the most ideal entries for mean reversion because you know that it's only ever going to go out as far as it does to that turning point. Um, that's probably another benefit that you get from different log returns, which would be the log of close and close uh, shifted one back. Uh, that gets you fairly close to stationarity, but uh, sometimes you can get these outliers from the tails of uh, price that will kind of chop you up sometimes if you assume that it's always going to hold through. Yeah, so from what you're saying is that there's various different tools that you can use to um, transform the price in in sort of a raw data sense that um, you can then it gives you a, a derivative of the original price so we want to make sure that when we when we transform the price it's a derivative not a change so it's it's getting rid of the the trend in the market or it's doing a logarithmic transformation and we're not actually distorting the price like you said at the start because the the last part of the question is, is it a deal breaker? And so I'm assuming what he means by that is, is it a must do? Now, at some point we will have a look at results between um, transformed data and raw data and have a more in-depth look at that. But basically it's the same as saying, is using a particular indicator any good? The answer to the question is how you use it. So transform data in and of itself is just more numbers. Do those numbers mean anything to you? Can they be used to create profit? Um, can they be used to predict price? That's what the important thing is. And there's no one way that that has to happen. And our systems that we use at the moment use raw price. Um, so is it a deal breaker? No, it does it actually improve the ability to find things in the, in the data. Perhaps it does, it gives you another, another whole broad area to, to search for the answers that we're all looking for. So, do you have any sort of closing summary of of price data and its importance? Uh, sorry, price transformation and its importance to development. Uh, well, all I'd say is whatever you try and do to the price, just make sure it's an honest representation of what that uh, fundamental stream of ticks is doing. If it's not an honest representation of what that is, then it's potentially going to lead you down. Uh, darker and more unprofitable path. Oh, excellent. So hopefully everyone enjoyed that quick chat that we have with our new member Gaza. So we'll have more chats to him soon about his 
journey to into the dark rabbit hole of um, Forex system development. And we'll also very shortly have an announcement about our mentor room. But until next time I talk to everyone, green pips. And um, yes, talk to you soon. Bye.